advances in patient monitoring. What advances have we been seeing? Well, we've had a couple really good ones recently. CPAP and tidal CO2. Those two things have drastically changed the way that we, um, the way that we talk, the way that we deal with our respiratory distress patients. None of this will ever replace a thorough patient assessment in the health hands of a skilled clinician. Cardiac monitors tell us a lot. An ECG can give us such a good picture of what's going on in the patient's heart. How healthy is it? What are the damages associated with it? What are the risks associated with it? What's going on with their heart? Capnography, end tidal CO2 monitoring. We're gonna, I'm gonna go over this in more, more depth later because it's actually pretty fascinating. And when we're talking about the respiratory system, that's when this is all gonna kind of come in together. Um, end tidal CO2 is great. It measures the amount of CO2 that we're breathing off. So we can measure the amount of oxygenation in our hemoglobin, and we can also measure the amount of CO2 that we're breathing off, which is a much more exact measurement. Those two combined tell us a lot about how the patient's breathing. Every single respiratory distress patient you get, you should put end tidal on them. Every single one, 100%. Every CPR, you should have end tidal on them. Every single time. There's no reason not to. It is a vital statistic and it should be a mandatory one. How about this? You have a patient who's altered. They're acting weird and all their other vitals are normal. Put an end tidal monitor on them. Check that out. You need to see if that number could be what's going on. I've had patients that are completely normal and then their end tidal 75. That ain't good. You guys might remember that end tidal should be anywhere between 35 and 45. What do those numbers mean? Again, I'm going to go over those when we're going over the respiratory section. Don't you worry. Glucometers, these are not new, but they've been very helpful. Digital thermometers, a little more accurate. Airway monitoring, CPAP, PEEP, capnography, automatic transport ventilators. CPAP and PEEP are the big ones here. CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. Keep in mind, most people breathe through negative pressure. Your diaphragm contracts, it forms a vacuum in your lungs and air passively passes, or it, air passes into them naturally, okay? Nature abhors a vacuum, so it will rush to fill it. And then we breathe out, it's a passive process. Continuous uh, positive airway pressure is like a BVM. We're pushing air into the lungs, forcing it. This is not the way we normally breathe, so it's gonna have different effects on our bodies, which we'll talk about later. And then PEEP is the pressure against exhaling. CPAP and PEEP are very similar to, if you've ever been driving on the highway and you stick your head out the window, it's hard to breathe in and out, right? It's very uncomfortable. You're forcing air into it and you're also putting resistance towards breathing out, which is helping to keep the air in there longer so that it has more time to perform gas exchange. We use these two very well to help us with a lot of our respiratory disease.